Welcome to Slutty Book Club, a feminist comedy book review for people who like to Dutch oven their dogs. This week, the book that we're discussing is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which we're very excited about because she's considered the mother of horror. Let's get the books in with Christian. Ladies. Thank, thank you. Me encanta cuando me soplan el pito. Damn. I just came. You too? Yep, yep. Why don't you guys come with us into our beds? Christian too, though. Christian, Christian will have to, to join us because we're very afraid that there could be a monster under the bed. That, that could be the reason that we're bringing Christian into the bed. Not for a threesome. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. While he's at sea, Robert Walton, an explorer, writes letters to his sister because he's bored as fuck and there's no Instagram. The letters tell the tale of Walton rescuing a sickly man, Victor Frankenstein, who tells him a crazy ass story that goes like this. Frankenstein was a scientist obsessed with creating life. But instead of just knocking up a lady like pretty much anyone else would, Dr. Frankenstein constructs a monster out of animal bones and human corpse. And then is stunned when his creature turns out to be hideous. Like a real fucking genius. Like many new dads, Victor Frankenstein took a look at his creation and went, nah, I'm not into it, and pieces the fuck out. Abandoned and lonely, the creature, whom Frankenstein refers to as the Daemon, and not Matt Damon, tries to find a human friend, but everyone's terrified of him, so he vows to take revenge on his creator, killing Frankenstein's loved ones one by one. When the Daemon finally pops Frankenstein's fiance, the doctor snaps, and the two spend months trying to kill each other. This brings us back to the boat where, having told his tale to Walton, Victor croaks. The Damon then appears on board, not Matt Damon, telling Walton <laughs> how sad he is about what went down and promises to kill himself in a fire in the mountains now that the whole Meshukas is over. The end. That was beautiful. You're beautiful. Thank you. You have great skin. <laughs> This book is one that I had not really read in high school at all, and I loved it. I thought it was life-changing. I really related to the monster. You know, people think Frankenstein is that sort of Disney cartoon version where he's got like the bolts in his neck and he's just like, Whoa. Well, they think that's Frankenstein. In the original book, Dr. Frankenstein's monster is not that classic, Whoa. He's actually very intelligent, he's well-read, he's articulate, but then he'll just kill you if you say no to him. Like, like Ted Bundy. Like Paul Bernardo. Ooh. <laughs> I thought it was a really good book. Really interesting. I just couldn't help but wonder like, why did he make this like ugly weird dude? Like couldn't he have just like made a super hot chick and not have to like lust after his sister? Like a sick fuck. What a shitty dad. Like everyone says that even if your kid's ugly, you're gonna love it. And this guy was like, oof. And then he just pieced out. But that's like every parent's dream, which is why I think a parent should read this book. Because this is like- You think this is like a parenting This guy? is a parent's dream. If you have a kid and you don't like it, you can just Abandon get the it, fuck out of and there. And then it'll murder everyone you love. He's like, my, he's actually a bit my ideal man because he's really smart. He's really well read. He speaks- he's creepy as fuck. He, <laughs> it's my track record. I know. Anybody out there with these redeeming qualities- Call me. So if you were- Dr. Frankenstein, you're like all up in your lab doing some crazy ass shit and you could make your own man, what would he look like? So we have Angelina Jolie's face. Natalie Portman's slender neck. David Hasselhoff's really nice rugged chest hair. Miley Cyrus's hip bones, cause I find her attractive. Also Miley Cyrus's legs, cause she does yoga. And then just no feet. Oh, and Shaquille O'Neal's penis, but removable, like a Velcro one. Ooh, like a strap-on Shaquille O'Neal dick. Yeah. I feel like they have those at the sex shop. What's your perfect creature? My perfect creature would have my puppy dog's face. <laughs> this bestiality. You don't know what his tongue can do. Charlie Hunnam's like torso and arms. Okay. Mark Wahlberg's dick because it's the only Hollywood one it? that I've seen. Boogie Have you Nights. Seen it? Boogie okay. Nights. That's the only Hollywood one it's you've seen. It's a foot long. Like, do you a just watch sub. Disney all day? And then Beyonce's legs because they're mocha and they're strong, and she probably smells amazing. Her legs smell amazing. Yeah, I'm sure every part of her smells amazing. My dog face could eat your David Hasselhoff hair. That is true. I feel like mine's kind of an anorexic, hairy drunk. Yeah. Beyonce's legs would win alone. She'd be all like. All oh, those single ladies. Yeah, but my Angelina Jolie brain would be like, why do you even want to fight with me when you could be helping refugees? 
and then the Miley Cyrus bottom would open her legs and just psychedelic drugs would come out of her vag. This segment of the show is called Bookmark, where anyone with book-related names can write in and ask questions. So you can tweet us at Slutty Book Club, hashtag bookmark. Our first question today comes all the way from England. From, from Paige Carlisle. And she wants to know, did Frankenstein's junk work? No, I do mean the scientist, not the reanimated corpse. Well, Paige, I'm gonna have to say that his junk probably didn't work. Cause I don't think most guys would get a boner for their sister. But if there were no boners involved, I could understand how you could confuse familial love with romantic love. Been there. This question is from Al Igori. Which sort of dick did Frankenstein pick out for the monster? Does a monster even have a dick? I'm going to assume that the monster did have a dick because he wanted Frankenstein to make him a woman monster and I don't think that was just so he could stare at her all day. Our next question is from Mark and he's writing in from Necrophiliacs Anonymous so he probably shouldn't have given us his name. Did Frankenstein spend a lot of time looking for the right cadaver dick? I don't understand why all you people got from this book was dick, 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 dick. Monster dick, everyone wants to know about monster dick. Presumably, he didn't spend a lot of time looking for the right cadaver dick because if he did, probably halfway along the way, he would have been like, you know what? We could probably find a better looking vagina. This is Under the Sheets. The sexiest lines in the book. Again I rose, and exerting all the firmness of which I master, removed the planks. Some feelings beat, even in these rugged bosoms. So this is the part of the show where we decide whether or not Frankenstein gets to go inside our boxes. Christian? I have to say, if ever there was a book that I wanted to put in my box over and over and over again, in and out, in and out, and at varying speeds and with varying rhythms, in and out, it would be this book. It's one of the scariest, if not the scariest stories I've ever read that wasn't in the newspaper. And I think that the world has done this story a disservice by adapting it so badly yeah. in goofy movies where the monster is just a stupid... Green man. Green man. So I'm gonna say, in and out, 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 and then eventually, just for brevity's sake, just, just in. so in that you can't even find it. I didn't feel quite as passionate or sexually turned on by Frankenstein, the horror novel. Scared me a little. Yeah. Kept it, it in the fridge for a bit. Give you the queefs a bit. This queefing is not sexual. We've been over this so many times. It's like accidental and embarrassing. We don't need to go I'm into this right now. You're, it. You can't reappropriate queef. I've reappropriated queef, and so can you. It's a pleasant feeling in your visage. Continue. I am going to give this three queefs up and toss it in my box nice and smoothly. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to STD. That means subscribe, tell your friends, and discuss in the comments below. Because now we say sexually transmitted infection, not sexually transmitted disease. Why is that? <laughs> I think that's it, yeah? It's my dick in a box, guys. We love penises. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki like giants. <laughs>